Special delivery from a special bowler. Hello and welcome to the latest instalment of Pack Passion's exclusive cricket review show, View from the Pavilion. I'm Cheyenne and we have a very special show lined up for you today, as it's my pleasure to have the manager of Pack Passion, Sad Sadik, with me to provide his thoughts on the latest happenings in the cricket world. So first of all, welcome Sad and thank you for your time. Thank you very much for having me, Shane. It's a pleasure to be with you on the show. And may I add that you've done a fantastic job over the past few weeks in uh, in hosting this show. Thank you very much. Um, firstly, we're going to talk about the obvious topic, really, of the Champions Trophy squad, which I think is due to be announced tomorrow. Um, we talked at length about this in the in the last episode, so I want to just focus on a few areas in particular, um, and that is the past bowlers. Um, we know that now that Umar Gul isn't going to be um, in the squad due to injury. I was wondering what you think about who his possible replacement could be and how the fast bowling lineup is looking. Yeah, I mean, um, Umar Gul, he's, he's taken quite a bit of stick recently from Pakistani fans with regards to his performances in um, Test cricket and One Day cricket. You know, T20 cricket generally has been okay, but I think uh, sometimes people give him too much stick, if you see what I mean. You know, they're, they're a bit too critical of him. He's going to be missed, no doubt about that, um, in England. You know, he's an experienced bowler, usually bowls well in England. 2009 um, you know, World Cup, he, he had a fantastic tournament. So, you know, he is going to be missed. Um, as far as replacements are concerned, let's see. You know, Mohamed Irfan and Junaid Khan, they, they uh, picked themselves automatically. They're going to be the first choice. They're going to spearhead the attack. Um, the, the two uh, pace bowlers who I think should be selected with um, Irfan and Junaid are uh, firstly Esad Ali, who's been very consistent for Feslabad and SNGPL um, this season and the last few seasons. I think in England uh, he's got a lot of experience in bowling in English conditions, albeit in club cricket. Um, he would be my third choice seamer. I'd also go with um, Asan Adil as uh, a bowling all-rounder. Um, inexperienced, only 19 or 20 year old, did okay in South Africa in, in the few opportunities that he got there. I would also select him. And um, I would also go with <coughs> excuse me, Hamad Azam as well as uh, an all-round option. Um, with Abdul Razak off the scene these days, I think uh, Hamad Azam would be my... Uh, Fifth choice as, as such in the uh, in the Pakistan uh, squad. Right, yeah, I agree with you actually about Hamad because I thought that he was probably dropped um, too soon after he was you know he made a few appearances. I thought he was dropped a bit too soon. And yeah, with uh, with the Razak out of the picture, we do need um, an all rounder really. Um, I just want to move on to another um, player who I like to call the Marmite of Pakistan cricket. That's uh, Shahid Afridi. He um, you know, I wanted to know, if you were in charge, you were selecting the team that's announced tomorrow, would he be on in the list? I wrote down 15 names who I think should be in the squad, who, who would be my choice um, for this particular tournament in England. And I've included Shai Um I know there's a, you know, his popularity probably isn't as high as it has been in the past due to some um, inconsistent performances of late. He's been struggling with the ball. <clears throat> we, we've seen that one innings uh, in South Africa where he smashed it all over the place, but those innings have become few and far between these days. Um, I personally would say to him, OK, go out there, do what you're best at, which is smashing the ball to all parts, and you know, pr- provide a um, strong support to the likes of Saeed Ajumal Irfan and Junaid Khan in the bowling department and um, give him one last chance, I think, in the Champions Trophy. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I thought that his, his, you know, he's a bowler, first of all, um, and his performance in South Africa with the ball in the ODIs, not taking a wicket, I just felt that, you know, that they'd, they'd be justified, I think, if, if he was dropped from the squad tomorrow. Um, yes, he had that one innings, but, you know, I, I do feel that he is a bowler now, we can't really rely on him as, as a batsman, and... Um, yeah, if he, if he has dropped tomorrow, I don't think it would be a huge shock. But as a fan, I think I would like to see him. 
Um, the interesting thing is, um, I, I'm led to believe that he's not attended any of the fitness uh, tests. Um, you know, that's that's the stories in, in the media at the moment. Now, speaking to a few of the boys today and yesterday, it seems to me that um, the guys who have been called for fitness tests in Lahore are the ones that are in the running for the squad, either 15 or the five reserves. A couple of the boys that I've uh, spoken to weren't called up for any of these fitness tests, so it seems likely that uh, those boys won't be included in the squad. Now, again, if Afridi's not gone for a fitness test, then, you know, it, it's a possibility that he may not be included. Yeah, well, I think a lot of them, um, that'd be, again, mixed reaction if that happened. Um, what about any other sort of wild cards in your in your squad that you, you've written down? Um, are there anybody else you think might make it who's unexpected? I'd like to see a couple of left-handers in the middle order. You know, we, we've relied heavily on Nasser Jamshed as the only left-hander. Um, you know, it's all been dominated by right-handers. Ms. Bawal Akmal, Akmal, Kamran Akmal, uh, Hafiz, Asad Shafiq, all those guys, as I say, right-handed batsmen. Um, I'd like to see Umar Amin in the squad. I think he's a good batsman. Um, you know, he, he can... Um, he can up his strike rate very quickly. He's good in the field. He can also bowl a few overs of decent medium pace, which could be useful in England. And one of my young favourite batsmen is um, Harris Sewell, who I've championed a lot on Pat Passion. Um, I think he's an excellent batsman, and he's been unlucky with injuries when he's been called up for squads, South Africa being an example. Um, but I'd like to see him in, in that squad um, also. Yeah, Umar Amin's an interesting one actually because he's uh, he took some wickets in England last time he was here as well, didn't he? So, yes, that's right. Yeah, I think he could be quite a useful option. And what about the Champions Trophy as a whole, Saj? Um, do you think Pakistan have, have got a chance? Who else do you think might might be lifting that trophy later in June? Yeah, I think Pakistan are in a very tough group. You know, the the with all due respect to the teams in the group, I think they're in the tougher half of the competition. South Africa, a very confident team at the moment in all formats. You've got India there, you know, who, who seem to have, um, you know, uh, they, they perform uh, better against Pakistan in, in these such tournaments. They've got a good record against Pakistan also. Um, I think uh, Pakistan first game, West Indies, I think Pakistan will, will beat the West Indies. Hopefully that will give them a bit of confidence ahead of the next two games against India and South Africa. Um, put it this way, if Pakistan gets through the group, I think they could go on and win it. Because two games, semi-final and the final, as we all know, Pakistan are a big game uh, team. They can turn it on on you know one, any occasion is a one-off match. And as I say, if they can get through the group, I fancy Pakistan to win it. But out of all the teams, I think um, India look a very good side. And I think from the other group, um, uh, England look a, a very good side as well. What do you feel about South Africa? Do you think they uh, might finally win one of these tournaments? I thought you were going to say, will they choke? Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, as I said, they're a very confident side at the moment, particularly in Test cricket. I just wonder about their bowling. I know Stain, Morkel, fantastic. Um, I just wonder about their slow bowling options here in England and sort of the third, fourth seamers. Um, you know, that, that could be their weak weakness um, here in England. Right, yeah, well, moving on to another topic, I wanted to talk about Zakhar Ashraf, uh, the chairman of the PCB. Um, in the past, we've had some up and down, put it that way, chairmen of the PCB. What do you make of his tenure so far, in particular, his uh, efforts to reignite our ties with India? Yeah, he's, he's got a tough job there. He's following in the footsteps of uh, some interesting characters, let's just say. Um, the, the thing with uh, Zakhar Ashraf is he's... He's not a cricket man. You know, he, he's not got much idea, with all due respect to him, about cricket. He's business oriented. His, his background is banking and, and, you know, all, all that area. He, he's not a cricket man. So it's important that his advisors around him, um, you know, move him towards the right direction with regards to decision making. Now, I think some of his decisions that he's made have been very good. He's put in a lot of effort with regards to domestic cricket. There's still issues with domestic cricket. I mean, a couple of things that, um, 
you know, I mean, one of the things is, is the rate of pay that I always talk about on Back Passion with regards to domestic cricket. The PCB really need to look at that. Um, and I, and also A tours, junior tours, under 19 tours, because Akash needs to make more of an effort with regards to those tours, especially to countries like Australia, South Africa, um, New Zealand and England. Um, the other thing with Zach Ashraf is I think he made a mistake when he sent the Pakistan team to India. People listening to this might think, oh, hang on, what's he talking about here? That was a fantastic tour. Pakistan went there and, and beat India in, the, in their own backyard in the one-day series. But from a cricketing perspective, yeah, fine, Pakistan did well. But if you look at it this way, the Indians invited Pakistan over uh, to go and play there. What the Pakistan cricket board should have done was they should have had some sort of reassurance from the BCCI that they would get a, either a return tour or that India would definitely play Pakistan at the neutral venue. Now, what's happened here is that um, Pakistan have gone over there, filled the coffers of the BCCI with that tour from a commercial perspective, from the packed stadiums also, and uh, in return, what have Pakistan had and the Pakistan Cricket Board had? More promises. Yeah. So I think that was something that um, Zaka Ashraf possibly, looking back now, you might think mm, maybe that was a bit of a mistake. We rushed into those things. I appreciate that, you know, uh, coin a phrase, beggars can't be chosen because teams aren't coming to Pakistan, which is a big problem. And Zaka Ashraf is making great efforts with that regard. But I just think sending the team over to India was, was a bit of a mistake. Do you think he's making too much effort with the trying to get cricket back to Pakistan? I mean, we, we know the situation in Pakistan. We know it's it's bad. Do you think he should be, you know, getting more and more, you know, tours to the UAE? Should make that a permanent home? I think so, yes. I think you're absolutely right because um, at this moment in time, let's be honest, maybe one or two teams might tour Pakistan. And when I say one or two, I mean test-playing nations. Um, you know, the, the likes of uh, UAE and and uh, some of those teams, Kenya, etc., might well tour Pakistan. But I'm talking about test teams here. Maybe I mean we saw the uh, the farce with what happened with the, the Bangladesh series and Bangladesh pulling out of the Pakistan tour at the last minute. I agree. I think he's making too much of an effort. What he should do is look to play more series, not just in the UAE, but maybe try and organise a series here in England. You know, I mean that would be fantastic. They'd get better crowds for. for for starters, and, um, you know, get the ECB involved, like they did for the Pakistan-Australia series in 2010. Maybe try and have a Pakistan uh, test series here here in England, which I think would be a fantastic uh, venture. It's interesting you mention that, but do you not feel that after what happened in 2010, that the ECB might not be willing to? I don't mean just the, the spot fix and stuff, but I know that Yorkshire made a, a massive loss from the test, test match that they're hosting against Australia. Do you think that the ECB would be willing to do that again? Quite possibly. I mean, the ECB might not want that option, especially with Australia coming over here and obviously New Zealand at the early part of the year. But, you know, it's worth thinking about. You've got to look at wider options than the, than just the UAE, um, where Pakistan, in my opinion, and, and from what I've heard, are making heavy losses with hosting series in the UAE due to the costs and the fact that um, very few people are turning up for Test cricket there. Um, I think um, the Pakistan Cricket Board's relationship with the ECB has improved now since um, Ijaz's tenure uh, finished, and I think uh, Zaka Ashraf should make some efforts with regards to possibly having a home series um, in England, if possible. Well, on, a, on a personal note, I mean, I'd love to see more, more Pakistan matches in England, but let's see, let's see what happens. Um, Moving on to the next topic, I just wanted to talk about the, the batting coach position in the Pakistan side. We've had a, a few rumours here and there of Darren Lehman and Grant Flower of possible names cropping up. Firstly, do you think we need a batting coach? And secondly, you know, do you think it needs to be local, foreign? What do you think? I'm always one who has the uh, philosophy that too many cooks spoil the broth. And at this moment in time, you've got a head coach, you've got a fielding coach, you've got a bowling coach. Um, I think that's more than enough. I think the head coach should be responsible for the batting and, um, you know, the, 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 the role of um, overseeing the other coaching staff. Now, I know uh, some of the teams around the world have an entourage of coaches and, and backroom staff and 
um, you know, people that are with the team when they tour. But I, I personally think um, Pakistani cricketers are a simple bunch. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. I think they know what is expected of them. And I personally think that too many coaches will just confuse their minds. Um, somebody like Miss Bauhak, a senior cricketer there, can advise the other batsmen. Now, whether they listen to his, his advice is another matter, but I think the Pakistan Cricket Board are wasting their money by uh, looking for a, another um, another coaching, uh, another member of coaching staff. Um, you know, a, a batting coach, in my opinion, is, is not needed. I think I'd agree with you there. Just because I feel that the head coach should be responsible for at least one of those areas that we've already got a coach for, like a bowling batting or fielding, for example, I don't think there's any point of him. Exactly. I mean, you know, what is the point of having a head coach then? What, what is that head coach doing? Is he just um, coaching the coaches, so to speak? You know, is he just there to um, oversee the coaching? I know the, the specialist areas, cricket's changed, it's a lot more technical now, but, okay, I can understand the fielding coach because Pakistan's weakness has always been their fielding. Um, bowling coach, yeah, fair enough, you can understand that because Dav wasn't... Um, a bowler as such in himself when he played. Um, but I, I personally don't think um, they need a, another coach in there. It's, it's just going to complicate things. Yeah, but I, think, I think I'm with you there. Um, just moving on to our final topic, uh, the viewer should be able to see a post of the week on screen uh, by a poster called Javelin this week who talked about the IPL um, and how you know there's a, there's a conflicting opinion at the moment about whether or not Pakistani players should be allowed in you know, whether the BCI is being inconsistent with all the allowing umpires, etc. Now, he makes a very good point that, really, this, this, uh, this whole IPL situation will only benefit, perhaps, five or six Pakistani cricketers, um, whilst the rest of them are going to be in the same situations. You know, what do you make of that? Yeah, it's an interesting point, isn't it? I mean, I, I look back to the first IPL and you had a whole host of Pakistanis there, you know. There's, um, I mean, off the top of my head, it must have been at least ten. Remember, Suhail Tanvir, Kamran Akmal was there, Shweb the Salman Bhatt, and, um, you know, Afridi was there, and uh, there was a whole, uh, Hafiz, there was a whole host of them there. Now, I, I think, um, it would be more than five or six. Let, let's make that clear. The Indian franchises, the IPL franchises, I think would want Pakistani cricketers there for two reasons in, in their squads. Firstly, Pakistani cricketers are liked, loved in, in India. The Indian fans love Pakistani cricketers. And secondly, from a cricketing perspective, T20 cricket is Pakistan's strength. We have a whole host of cricketers, 10, 12, maybe more cricketers, whose best um, performances have been in T20 cricket. Their strength is T20 cricket. And so, I, I mean, whilst it's a good post, I agree with it being awarded the post of the week. I think that you'd get at least 10 to 12. I mean, if you look at the IPL at the moment... Again, without wanting to sound disrespectful, there's some cricketers there from overseas who uh, you, I've not heard of, firstly. And secondly, there's some there who are just sat there warming the bench, uh, carrying drinks onto the field. They're not getting their chance simply because they're not good enough. They're just there to make the numbers. Whereas I think the Pakistani cricketers would be there, not just making up the numbers, but they'd be there performing as well. What do you think of... Um what happened recently when the domestic matches in Pakistan were rescheduled so that they didn't clash with the IPL? I mean, does that suggest that, you know, even without Pakistani players there, there's a, being a negative impact on, you know, on Pakistan domestic cricket? I thought it was an absolute disgraceful decision. Whoever made that decision, you know, they, they should hang their head in shame because I can't think of any other country in the world that would be rescheduling, rescheduling their domestic cricket just so that people... Uh, could watch the IPL and the matches didn't clash with the IPL. Surely your own domestic cricket comes first. Your own cricketers come ahead of the uh, TV scheduling of the IPL. So really it was a disgraceful decision in my opinion and something that should never happen again. If it meant the IPL matches not being shown because the um, pres President's uh, Trophy matches semi-finals and final are going to be shown, then so be it. Tough. You know, scrap the IPL matches for those days, but show your own cricket. You know, it was ridiculous that the matches had to start at half eight in the morning and had to be rescheduled uh, because of the IPL matches. It was embarrassing. It is, isn't it? I mean, it's incredible. that It just shows that, that money money does talk. There clearly is a demand for the IPL. Um, 
and there's no doubt that that would go up if, if the Pakistani players were involved. Well, viewing figures would be interesting to see whether how many Pakistanis actually watching the IPL in, in Pakistan. Uh, I'm sure that the, the channel that's showing the IPL must have some sort of um, you know rating figures. It must be cost-effective for them to show the IPL in Pakistan. Okay, fair enough. They can show whatever they want on the channels. But the point being, and, and in answer to your question, of the Pakistani domestic matches having to be rescheduled because of the IPL it is utterly disgraceful. Yeah, well, um, I agree with you there, Saj. Um, that's going to be all for this week. Um, thank you again, Saj, for all your fascinating thoughts and, um, of course, to everyone listening. Um, do join us again next time for Pat Fashion's View from the Pavilion. Thank you. <laughs>